what is our third main topic today? All right, guys. Our third main topic comes from Fernanda Reyes. Hello, John, and thank you for the show. I saw a story that said Wheel of Time is actually ahead of Hawkeye for the number one in-demand show in the world right now. This is shocking to me. Is Wheel of Time really that popular? Is this a sign that maybe the comic book genre isn't as all-powerful as we think it is? What's your opinion of the situation? Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in. Yeah, now look, there are a couple of big, highly anticipated projects that are out there right now. Hawkeye obviously started. And by the way, tonight is Hawkeye night. Yeah. Hawkeye night tonight. Hawkeye night. <clears throat> Make sure you come by. Bring some chips again. Oh, are you going to barbecue this time? You said you're going to yeah, barbecue. I forgot. Oh, that's right. Ray's bringing barbecue oh, today. Oh, man. It's going to be cooking day for me today. Shut up. I don't want to hear about any other cooking you're doing. <laughs> no other cooking. Barbecue My interest in that you're doing today yeah. other than barbecuing for Hawkeye tonight. And of course, tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that's right. Of course, tomorrow, uh, I'll let you guys know that uh, i'll bring this up here quick of course tomorrow is going to be hawkeye open spoiler discussion that'll be of oh, course tomorrow tomorrow afternoon but we're going to watch hawkeye tonight tomorrow afternoon we're going to do the hawkeye open spoiler discussion so make sure you guys come by and join us for that but yes so hawkeye's out there but wheel of time is out there too and i'm going to be honest with you while i know while i knew that wheel of time certainly has a loyal following i never suspected it was actually going to end up being that big i i really didn't think it was going to be that big but it's the number one show in the world. Dang. And it's playing a little bit of hopscotch. Now, check out this, this graphic here. So basically, this comes to us from uh, Parrot Analytics. That basically what you see there is purple is Wheel of Time, which of course opened and debuted before Hawkeye did. Then you see that Hawkeye surpassed Wheel of Time. But then when the next episode of Wheel of Time came out, episode four, it surpassed Hawkeye again. So right now, Hawkeye and Wheel of Time are kind of doing a, a little bit of a hopscotch. They're kind of piggy, like uh, leapfrogging back and forth over each other a little bit right now. But it does show again more proof that the weekly release strategy works. Because you see week after week, you see Wheel of Time get higher and higher. And even though Hawkeye surpassed it, it put out a new episode, boom, it becomes the number one rated show in the world again. This comes to us from the folks, again, over at Parrot Analytics who wrote the following. The series' weekly release schedules are working to their advantage. Demand for Hawkeye outpaced demand for the Wheel of Time in the two days following its series launch, while the Wheel of Time rose back to number one the day after its fourth episode launched. Hawkeye rose to the top of the global demand chart significantly faster than its fellow Marvel live action series. Listen to this. This is good news for Disney. The time between launching and hitting number one worldwide continues to shorten for the Disney Plus Marvel slate. WandaVision, which debuted in January, became the most in-demand TV series in the world across all platforms 14 days after launch. So that was by episode three. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier launched in March and became the number one worldwide eight days after launch, while Loki became the top show in the world seven days after its June 9th launch. And of course, Hawkeye exceeded even that. So I think there's a couple of interesting stories here. Story number one is Wheel of Time. I, I mean, obviously, you're the number one show in the world. This I knew it was going to have people excited about it. I knew there was going to be a core group of people that want to watch it. I did not think it would have this kind of global appeal. To be honest with you. Now, I've watched it. I, I've caught up to episode four. I don't think it's fantastic. But it's got me interested enough that I still continue to plan to keep watching it. You like, didn't feel the way you felt with a Hawkeye episode? No, I like it more. I'll be honest with you. Right now, four episodes into Wheel of Time, I like it more than Hawkeye. But Hawkeye could easily pass it for me tonight if they give us a really good episode tonight. So we'll keep our eyes open for that. But it's enjoyable enough, Wheel of Time. It's enjoyable enough. Again, not great, but whatever. You do raise an interesting question, though, when you ask, does this mean that the comic book genre isn't as all-powerful as we think it is? Well, it's a good question, but there's a couple things you got to keep in mind. The thing you got to keep in mind, number one, is that Hawkeye is still competing pretty... Wheel of Time is ahead, but it Hawkeye is competing neck and neck with it. And after Hawkeye has a new episode come out tonight, it's probably going to pass Wheel of Time. So keep that in mind. The second thing you got to keep in mind is this. Hawkeye's release is probably represents the release of the least popular 
MCU character stuff they've done so far, other than maybe Ant-Man. There are lesser known, probably lesser loved characters coming, but that have been released up till now. This isn't the Iron Man and Captain America Adventure Hour TV show that Wheel of Time is competing with. It's Hawkeye. And it's still right up there with it. But it does say something. It, it, this is what it does tell us. It tells us that there is still an audience for stuff that isn't comic book genre. Hey, yeah. There are still big audiences for stuff that isn't comic book genre. And Wheel of Time is proof of that. And so I think that's pretty interesting in and of itself as well. So again, I expect Hawkeye to retake the number one spot. And then when Wheel of Time puts out a new episode, we'll, they'll probably, like I said, keep leapfrogging each other for a bit. But Kim, I want to ask you, have you watched any of Wheel of Time? At no, this point? no. Yeah. I, it's on my list. Foundation. Um, I just, oh, you got to watch Foundation. just started Foundation. I fell asleep yesterday when I was starting to watch it. Um, and then Wheel of Time is on my list. I'm, I'm almost done with Arcane. I have one more episode. Um, and so there's so many good shows right now, but I, I think they bring up an interesting point because if you think about it, when WandaVision was out, what what show had to be good enough for someone to be above like WandaVision? And then you think about Loki. And so it's interesting that it's neck and neck right now. I'm like, okay, yeah. all right, and, you got my attention. And that their ascension to the number one spot in the world is getting faster and yeah. faster, which means that that because shows like WandaVision and because, look, look, I like Loki and Falcon Winter Soldier. I didn't love them nearly as much as WandaVision, but they were both good. The Disney shows are now getting a rep with their audience that, oh, yeah, when a new Marvel show comes out, watch it. Because that yeah. their ascension to the number one spot is getting shorter and shorter, and that's pretty interesting. Question is for you guys. Have you guys had a chance to see Wheel of Time yet? Have you watched Hawkeye? Which one do you prefer? Are you surprised, as probably a lot of people, to see that Wheel of Time is meeting and sometimes exceeding that of Hawkeye? Right now, it's the number one show in the world. However you guys think about this, jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts.